Hi, I'm Leon and I'm presenting our study which compared the use of voice versus screen-based interactions for agent-assisted tasks. In the past 5 to 10 years, conversational agents have become commonplace, taking on various roles to help us complete simple everyday tasks or provide information or basic support. When we interact with conversational agents, there are mainly two types of modalities, voice-based ones such as smart speakers or text or screen-based ones such as chatbots. Most of these conversational agents are still rather passive, waiting for the user to make a request. However, with technological advances, they will become more and more capable to also proactively intervene by themselves, which leads us to the question of how best to design such proactive assistance, including which modality they should use. Leon, maybe you would like to go to the next slide? Sure, thanks for this proactive suggestion. Obviously, in certain situations, one modality may be more desirable or effective than the other, which depends on various factors. For example, is it a work or a home environment? Is there one person present or multiple? All of these aspects are important when deciding which modality to use. Here, we are specifically interested in which modality is more appropriate or effective in a collaborative situation where people perform a task together, being co-located. The scenario that we consider is collaborative exploratory data analysis, which is a common task performed by knowledge workers across various industries. Think of, for example, marketing managers looking at recent sales data together to identify trends and patterns. It is also an interesting scenario for a proactive agent because many people have difficulties reading data visualizations properly and discovering interesting trends and patterns in them. In our study task, we used 22 visualizations from the Global Burden of Disease study, one of which is shown below. Our research questions were, when you have a proactive agent that prompts users by asking questions about the task at hand, how does the modality affect the discussion and sense making between the pair, and how does the modality affect interactions with the system and exploration of the data visualizations? Here's an overview of what the conditions involved. In both conditions, the visualizations were presented in the same way on a large display on the wall. How the conditions differed was in how the system and the participants interacted with each other. Participants could provide a request through speech in the voice condition, and in the screen condition, they did so through a screen interface. The system, on the other hand, provided its outputs, or the prompts, in the voice condition through synthesized speech, and the screen condition as text messages next to the data visualizations. What were our hypotheses? Firstly, regarding the human-computer interactions, we hypothesized that the voice condition would encourage more interaction with the system and more of the available data visualizations would be looked at by participants. Secondly, regarding the human-human interactions, we hypothesized that the voice condition would encourage more turn-taking and question-asking between participants. The reason for focusing on question asking is because it is an important aspect of any exploratory task. We used the Wizard of Oz setup for our study, where the wizard in the adjacent room observed the pairs and decided based on two simple rules at which point to trigger which prompt, which he selected from the interface here. The rules were, have the participants already discussed the trend or pattern which the prompt is referring to? If not, the prompt would be triggered but only once there is a longer silence in the pair's discussion. So what exactly happened in the two conditions? In the voice condition, one of the participants speaks out a request to generate a visualization, for example, show women and men. And then, after the pair have discussed the visualization for a while, the system may ask a question about an aspect in the visualization the pair haven't yet considered or discovered. And in the screen condition, on the other hand, the same interactions occur, but in this case, just through a screen interface, and as a message appearing on a large display. Now let me show you a quick example of two participants requesting visualization in the voice condition. Doesn't seem to be any clear pattern. So developed in the developing countries. So to request a new visualization here, which is then displayed. Yeah, okay. That's a lot more interesting. Then, after having discussed that visualization for a while, the agent may have provided a prompt like this one. Maybe you want to consider how the shape of the line compares to the one of adults. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot kind of wobblier. After that, the discussion of the agent's question then continued further, 
before they then switch to another visualization, which you discuss. So what were our main quantitative findings? Both of our hypotheses could be confirmed. In terms of our first hypothesis, there were more interactions with the system and more data visualizations being looked at in the voice condition than in the screen condition. In terms of our second hypothesis, participants ask each other significantly more exploratory questions in the voice condition. More specifically, there was a question approximately every minute in the voice condition and in the screen condition only about every two minutes. There was also more turn-taking or speaker changes in the voice condition than in the screen condition, indicating a more rapid back and forth between participants while we were discussing. Furthermore, we found that in the voice condition, interactions between participants were more balanced in terms of how much they contributed to the conversation as well as how much they interacted with the system. For more details on these and other findings, please take a look at our paper. To give you an idea of what the exploratory questions of participants looked like, here is an example. We can see that participants first discuss how the time series graphs have changed to then move on to speculate how they will evolve further. Like will it keep rising slowly, will it jump up, will it stabilize, and so on. This example shows nicely how participants are making sense of, question and hypothesize about the data visualizations following a prompt by the conversational agent. Now to our main qualitative findings. One key finding was that in the screen condition, there was a tendency to spend more time making sense of the agent's question and what exactly it means before participants start discussing possible answers. In the voice condition, on the other hand, participants more directly start discussing possible answers to the agent's question as if they are thinking out loud. One main reason for this could be that if the system speaks with participants, as in the voice condition, they just feel more compelled to answer directly, like they would do when another human conversation partner asks them a question. In the screen condition, users may feel less compelled, since the system does not actively intervene in the conversation. In both conditions, the proactive prompts seem to get participants to discover things they would have otherwise missed. So to conclude. The voice modality seemed particularly suitable for open-ended tasks, enabling faster flowing conversations and helping users generate more exploratory questions. Independent of the modality, probing human cognition through proactive conversational agent prompts seemed to be effective, as it got users to slow down, reflect on and explore other aspects of the data visualizations which they would have otherwise missed. What will the future hold for proactive agents and which tasks will they support us with? We are already excited to see.